Welcome to the presentation on projectiles. Uh, if you read the aims here, you should get an idea of what you're aiming to get out of this lesson or this tutorial. Okay. This is like a little starter for you to think about what you should have, what you should know already before you take this tutorial. Uh, if you look at these four graphs, decide which graphs are under, uh, or whether they're under the correct titles or not. So here we have uniform acceleration and constant velocity. So just take a minute, maybe pause the video and have uh, a little look. Okay, so if you've paused the video and had a good look, you you should have noticed that these two were under the correct ti under the incorrect titles, and they should have been this way around. So we've got uniform acceleration on the left and constant velocity on the right. Uh, if you weren't able to do that, maybe it's a good idea to go back and review some of the previous videos. Right, uh, this is these are stills taken from uh, a video of Talal passing a tennis ball to Ahmed, and you can clearly see that the tennis ball follows a curved path. This kind of curve is called a parabolic curve. Um, okay. Now, what I want to do is analyze the distances traveled in each frame of motion in the horizontal plane. Just the horizontal for now. So I've put these grid lines down to help me do that. Uh, if I take those grid lines and flip them around uh, so that I can look at distance and then we can say this bit's time, stick in a graph, piece of graph paper. So these red lines now are the distance traveled at each point. Uh, I can get the velocity by dividing the distance traveled by uh, the time it took to, to travel that. Now for the sake of simplicity I'm going to say that each uh, frame of my photograph was taken one second apart. They were actually taken one thirtieth of a second apart but it just makes the presentation easier if I sit there. Uh, one second apart and then I only have to divide displacement by one and the arrow size will remain the same and then I can just plot them out as the velocities at each of those uh, instances in time. So if I do that you can see quite clearly that the velocity does not vary with time it's a straight line so in in the horizontal plane the velocity of that object is uh, constant now let's have a look at the same thing but for the velocity in the vertical plane, that's up and down. If I look at how far the ball has travelled between uh, this point and this point, again I'm going to do the same thing with displacement, pretending that uh, the time taken was one second for each uh, moment, uh, each frame when it was actually one thirtieth, and then that way I don't have to change the size of my arrows. You'll notice that the arrows are going up here and they're coming down here. That's because displacement is a vector quantity, just like velocity is a vector quantity. And uh, the displacement was from this point to this point, and like similarly on this side, it was from this point to this point. Um, so if you were giving numerical values to these, they'd have a plus or a minus sign. So you'd, you'd decide, you would decide what conventionally would be up and down on your graph uh, or on your diagrams. You might make it plus when it's going up or minus when it's going up. It would be up to you. Right. So. I'm going to take it to be plus when the object's going up. So displacement is positive when the object's going up and negative when it's coming down. If I take these uh, arrows now, which now represent my velocity because I've divided them by the time taken, which was 1, so I get a velocity time graph of um, the, the tennis ball, but only in the vertical plane. And you can see that you've got deceleration, constant deceleration, and then constant acceleration. Uh, and um, it was acceleration due to gravity, as you would expect. And if you were to get the gradient of this graph, you should find the change in velocity uh, with time should be 10 meters per or 9.81 meters per second per second. Uh, okay. To summarize, objects that are moving horizontally as well as falling under gravity trace out parabolic curves. Displacement is a vector quantity, and it makes sense to analyze objects falling under gravity. Um, Sorry, it makes sense to analyze objects that are falling under gravity uh, as in the motion in the horizontal and the motion in the vertical frames. So what I mean by this is it's very easy to do calculations about something doing constant velocity. If I tell you an object was moving at 10 meters per second for 10 seconds, you know how far it's traveled. It's a 10, times, uh, 10 meters times 10 seconds, you get 100 meters. So you can do very simple calculations with horizontal 
uh, plane and then you can do separate calculations for the vertical plane and use equations like for acceleration which is uh, change of velocity over time taken and uh, it simplifies the whole process of any kind of calculations you might need to do with these things. Um, the horizontal component of velocity is constant, ne neglecting air resistance. In the case we just looked at, um, the ball wasn't moving very quickly, air resistance would have been negligible, and, and that was clear from the graph we saw. Um, the vertical component of velocity changes as it accelerates or decelerates due to gravity, and you could see that from the graph. So now one final thing, we're having a look at um, a simple bit of vector addition. If we remind ourselves of our two graphs, we got this graph of horizontal motion, it was constant, and we got this graph of vertical motion, uh, vertical velocity against time, and that was changing. If I put the vectors for the horizontal velocity in the direction that they should be uh, onto the graph, sorry, I did uh, vertical velocity first here, so it's these vectors, I've put them on the graph, and now I put the horizontal vectors on, we get... Uh, you can see the ball at each point in time would be traveling with a horizontal vector worth this much and a vertical vector worth that much. I can now sum those vectors into just one vector and know its actual velocity, uh, what it would have been doing at that moment in time. And I can do it very simply graphically by completing this square. <coughs> if I draw these grid lines out at right angles to these two arrows, uh, then the arrow that fits in between here uh, gives me the, compo uh, the sum of the, the vectors. Uh, you could also use trigonometry or Pythagoras theory uh, to calculate uh, the length of this hypotenuse here and that would give you the length of this triangle here and that's another way of calculating it. Uh, but for GCSE level, you're not expected to do calculations uh, with vector summing. You're just supposed to do um, a sort of drawing analysis. You just draw out the grid lines and then uh, fill in the blank. You may be asked to put a scale onto it as well. But this is just a, a brief introduction to vector analysis. Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully, if you've had any problems with this video or not understood any of the points, if you put some comments, uh, I can maybe address those or change it. And thanks very much for watching, and once again Khan Academy is my inspiration for these videos, so check him out on YouTube.